What's up YouTube? This is Tom with Fresh Vintage. Today we have a very special guest. We have a 1958 Corvette and Rick is here to tell us all about it. Rick, thank you so much oh, for taking the time here. Really, really appreciate it. Um, so awesome, awesome 1958 Corvette. Tell us a little bit, I know it's been in the family a long time, but tell us a little bit about the history of it and the backstory of it. Absolutely. So this car belonged to my father-in-law uh, who passed about 12 years ago and uh, he purchased it in the early 70s. And um, as a matter of fact, so long ago, I actually have a picture of my wife of 30 years when she was five years old standing next to the car. Um, he was super proud of it. He showed it a lot um, while my, my wife was young and uh, was originally red. Um, and he also decided he wanted to have, as is typical in the 70s, uh, he wanted to have a big motor. So he actually took the original 283 out and got a uh, racing motor that he ordered from California. Oh, um, wow. It's, it's a pretty jacked up 350. I'm not sure if it's uh, bored out or what the cam size is, but I can tell you, and you can tell from the sound, it's it's not stock. Okay, yeah, let's, uh, let's pop it open and we'll sure. take a look here. Everything else is original on the car. He kept all the original um, components, the chrome's all original, the seats, everything. This is awesome. And you said you've had it. Uh... So Sherry and I have had it for uh, about 11 years now. Okay. So when they passed away, we ended up uh, keeping it in the family. And uh, we've been enjoying it ever since. It is immaculate. And you were showing us the photos of the frame off restoration. Correct. So when he retired from, um, from work, he took some of his uh, retirement funds and had a full frame off restoration done probably about 15 years ago. It took several years uh, for them to complete it. Uh, and that's when he came out with the uh, black on black. The original was red. Uh, he had painted it silver for a number of years. And then when his youngest son was born, uh, he parked it and it literally sat under a, uh, under a canvas tarp for um, probably 18 years. Uh, until he uh, decided to reinvest in it and restore it to this condition that you see right now. And that's such a great story. Thank you for telling us, Rick, about the, the heritage, heritage of the car. Excuse me. My pleasure. It is a flawless representation of Americana. I, I love it. And the fact that we're doing this on July 1st and time for 4th of July is just even that much better. And your shirt, your shirt, I couldn't have asked for a better shirt here, folks, but America. There you go. Yeah, let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the interior here. Absolutely, it is. I can tell you, it's very warm on a sunny day. Yes, yeah, especially with the top down. But everything is original on the interior as well. I think they re redid the carpet itself, but the seats and all are original. Um, they did not originally come with seat belts. Those were added afterwards. Safety and was not as important, I guess, in the fifties. Yeah, who needs seat belts? You know. <laughs> Now the car does have a full, uh, uh, similarly painted hard top, uh, and then it also has a soft top that's underneath the little, uh, the little door here. So you can exit and get the soft top out. And then you also have this really cool. I love the glove box. Glove here. box for all your things. That's right. Because there's not really room here because the bar's here. That is the bar that you can hang on to. If you don't, you're going to slide around in here. They're not very sophisticated seats, so. Yeah, I actually um, was partaking in that bar earlier because uh, there's a, Rick brought up a really good point. There's not much in the way of bolstering on these seats, which is not a bad thing, but uh, you know, then, then when you're going around corners and stuff, you, you definitely need that that handle. So. And no, uh, no power steering. No, Hence this steering is manual wheel. steering, and you can also see where the soft top is stored. And you said the window on that thing's pretty small. It's pretty small. It's not easy to, um, and it's a little bit more, closes in on you a little bit. The hard top is fantastic. It has glass all the way around. You don't even tell that you have a top on. It does help in the sun though. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to have it on there as well. And when it's cooler out, obviously with a convertible, there are some times of the year where you've got to put a top on it and keep driving. You want to check out the trunk? Yeah, this uh, now one of the one of the uh, rarities of a 1958. They were the only Corvette in the C1 series that used the steel spears on the back and the chrome. I was admiring lots of those. chrome, and so if you see these spears, that is the only Corvette that will have it on there. Okay. 
trunk and again there. the trunk's the same you got the small uh, radial tires underneath that you can remove from there it's actually pretty good space I can put a cooler and some chairs when we go oh, to car nice. shows and stuff yeah. these were my father-in-law's signs that he had put on there when he went to car shows so in honor of him we, we put those on there pretty much every show that we go to to be honest I get as many pictures on that nude pic that nude <laughs> sign than I do the car sometimes it always gets people's attention yeah it's uh, it, the the, the signs and the uh, the paint, the chrome, I mean, this thing is just such a, an amazing piece of Americana and uh, such a beautiful, it's just amazing. You know, I'm, I'm kind of speechless right now, you know, when you stop and think about it, but um, it's, I love the, like the, the, the body lines on the back here. And uh, this was, this was a time in America where they really were, uh, I don't say adventurous, but like they, they just kind of let it all hang out in a good way. You know, you look at the caddies in the 50s and stuff and just how the, the bodies just flowed and stuff. It's yeah, just really, think, really nice. In articles that I read, they were, when they added all this chrome, some of the speed guys really didn't care for it in the 58, felt like it added weight, but they were competing with the Thunderbird and, and that was a component they were trying to address. Just like nowadays, you're always competing for customers um, and performance. So that's probably why this was the only year that did it. I think they had enough response on the on the performance side to change it uh, in that 59 through the uh, 62 version before they went to the Stingray and the C2. And it really adds an, an ornateness to it, but I think that's a really good thing because we like so many cars nowadays are just lost. It's just even the bumpers covered, you know, they're like it's the, the body match bumper color and it just it doesn't it, like the finish, like this feels more like finished and more um, like uh, perfected, so to speak. I don't know if it's when he put the racing motor in it um, or not, but you know, a, a purist is going to look at this and say the exhaust should be coming out the rear bumpers. So the original exhaust came out the bumpers right here, and uh, the exhaust on this car comes out behind the wheels. Um, honestly, it creates a lot of bluing and a lot of rust and a lot of opportunities there. So I don't know if he did it for aesthetics or function. Um, obviously, the tailpipes were a little bit smaller uh, with the 283, so he made that customization, but I never got a chance to ask him why, um, which was pretty interesting. The other odd part or, or unique part about a 58 is the, is the washboard hood, which from what my view is, I, I'm not sure what the function is. The only vehicle I've ever seen it on at the Corvette Museum, they had a Corvette Daytona prototype that had that component on the hood. Um, I'm not sure if it's an aerodynamics piece or, or what the case might be, but it is another unique characteristic of the 58 that you don't see it on any other vehicle. What's, uh, what's one thing you love about it and one thing that drives you nuts about it? Um, I love the fact that it is a showstopper and that people look and they get excited to see it. It feels good honoring all the hard work my father-in-law put into this car and uh, being part of the family. That's that's probably our most proud thing. Um, the most frustrating part, I really don't have a lot of frustrations. When we originally got it uh, and, and, and brought it home, it had an 1100 CFM carburetor on it. I couldn't keep it running at stoplights, so I changed it and put a Street Avenger uh, 650 on it, and it now operates well. So that's my only frustrating part. When it's really hot out, it doesn't like to stay running at stoplights, so I have to keep a little bit of gas on it. Out of everything else, that is the only inconvenience. Oh. And by the way, it's four-wheel drum brakes, so we go really fast. We need a lot of room to stop. So if that would be the other complaint is uh, performance-wise, because we've kept it as an original uh, with the tires and all that, it doesn't corner and brake well, um, but it does absolutely drive fast, and we love that. No, no slaloming then, huh? No, <laughs> but you got to experience that as well. Yeah, that uh, this thing definitely is a rocket. Even driving around town, you just hit the gas hard enough and it'll chirp the tires a little bit. So this uh, this is beautiful. And thank you so much for taking the time to bring it out. No, absolutely. Really, really appreciate I appreciate it. the invite and I uh, love to, to, to honor the tradition and the uh, and the history behind it, both personal and, and for the United States in the 4th of July weekend. Natural position for a passenger. Yes. Yeah.